Welcome back to Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, the series. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the things Marcus said about other people's opinions. If you haven't seen the first video of this series, please watch it. The link is in the description. In that video, I cover who Marcus Aurelius was and the basics of Stoicism. That video will give you a good foundation for the rest of the videos in this series. Alright, let's jump right in. Why do we care so much about other people's opinions? We are social creatures, and many of us learn from an early age that we need to fit in. We don't want to be labeled as weird or different, so we conform and try to fit in with everyone else. We simply don't want to be outcasted. It starts as a child, and it goes right into adulthood. As we grow up, we also develop a self-image. This self-image is how we see ourselves and how we want others to see us too. If you consider yourself a nice person or a people pleaser, you have a very altruistic self-image. This altruistic self-image requires constant maintenance and external validation in the form of praise and approval. You want evidence that this ideal self-image that you have created is accurate. So you're constantly looking for external validation from people, friends, family, colleagues, and even complete strangers. Sadly, many of us buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't even like. Charles Cooley, a social psychologist, developed a looking glass self-concept and it illustrates why other people's opinions have such a big impact on how we think about ourselves. The looking glass self-concept goes like this. First, we imagine how we appear to others. Then we imagine their judgment of that appearance. And then we develop our self-concept through the judgment of others. We then perceive the judgment as either favorable or unfavorable. Or, in the words of Charles Cooley, I am not what I think I am, and I am not what you think I am. I am what I think that you think I am. We try and uphold this ideal self-image through some seriously ass-backwards logic. It's absolutely exhausting and insane to try and uphold this self-image through something as subjective as another person's opinion. You can't control someone else's opinion. So this is a game that can't be won. I'll say it again. Constantly trying to validate your ideal self-image through the opinions of others is a doomed practice. You're basically handing over your self-worth to someone else. People's opinions oftentimes have nothing to do with you at all, so why give them this power? No one should have that kind of control over you except yourself. Or in the words of Lao Tzu, care about what other people think and you will always be their prisoner. So with all that said, this is what Marcus stated about others' opinions. Do not waste the remainder of thy life in thoughts about others. To care for all men is according to man's nature. And a man should hold on to the opinion not of all, but of those only who confessingly live according to nature. But as to those who live not so, he always bears in mind what kind of men they are, both at home and from home, and with what men they live an impure life. Accordingly, he does not value at all the praise which comes from such men, since they are not even satisfied with themselves. When another blames thee or hates thee, or when men say about thee anything injurious, approach their poor souls, penetrate within, and see what kind of men they are. Thou wilt discover that there is no reason to take any trouble that these men may have this or that opinion about thee. However, thou must be well disposed towards them, for by nature they are friends. And Marcus goes on to say, Consider that everything is opinion, and opinion is in thy power. Take away then, when thou choosest, thy opinion, and like a mariner who has doubled the promontory, thou wilt find calm, everything stable, and a waveless bay. Cast away opinion, thou art saved. So a couple comments on these quotes. First, don't waste time thinking about the opinions of others. Why consider the opinion of someone who is not even satisfied with themselves? Second, don't let anyone's hateful actions or words hinder you, but still treat them as friends. Third, don't try and be a people pleaser because you can't please everyone. And lastly, examine your own opinions as well. Stokes are big on self-reflection, so this is a good practice. Marcus goes on to say this about praise and pride. Dost thou wish to be praised by a man who curses himself thrice every hour? Wouldst thou wish to please a man who does not please himself? Does a man please himself who repents on nearly everything that he does? Everything which is in any way beautiful is beautiful in itself, and terminates in itself, not having praise as part of itself. And lastly, think of the eager pursuit of anything conjoined with pride, and how worthless everything is after which men violently strain. Some truly powerful and deep quotes there. Do not seek praise. 
You don't need praise or pride to fulfill your purpose. Do not seek substance in the opinions of others. So it's obvious that we should try our best to stop giving so much value to others' opinions, right? You simply don't need them. Look within instead. And here are a couple more reasons why you should cast away others' opinions. First, when you're living your life based on others' opinions of you, you're giving up your own authentic inner voice. You're not being your true self and not living to your potential. You won't be happy living a life dictated by other people. Two, people who live by their inner voice are leaders. Those that don't are followers. Followers are never the first to do something of importance. Third, you'll be more respected for being your own person and upholding your values, opinions, and morals. Someone won't agree with your opinion no matter what it is, so why not express your real one? Fourth, you will respect yourself more. If you live by your terms, you will have a higher level of respect and self-confidence. Fifth, when you're not putting your values first, you're not developing yourself or really doing any good. The world doesn't need more yes men. Pursue your own agenda, go after your dreams, and don't worry about how it will be perceived. Six, people who are guided by their own voice in the face of objection change the world. Inventors, visionaries, and creatives of all kinds are shunned and told they don't know what they're talking about all the time. But they still do it, and they change the world. Need examples of outcasts and people who stood up for their beliefs, even when everyone was against them? Just look at Galileo, Joan of Arc, Martin Luther, Robert Oppenheimer, Vincent Van Gogh, and Edgar Allan Poe. 7. It's empowering. When you're your true self, you feel like you can do anything. 8. People will always judge you and there isn't a damn thing you can do about it. So do what you want anyway. And 9. Most people don't care what you're doing anyway. They don't care because they're too wrapped up in their own drama. They're probably too worried thinking about what people think of them. You want proof? What's the first thing you look at when you look at a group photo? Probably yourself, right? People in social situations are the same exact way. They're focusing on themselves, not you. And I'll wrap it up with one of my favorite quotes. You wouldn't worry so much about what people thought about you if you knew how seldom they did. Unknown. If you found this topic interesting, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to be doing a more in-depth look at the opinions of others in another video, which will include practical steps on how to stop caring about other people's opinions so much. So please check it out in the description below. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. See you next time.